Hello, everyone. Welcome to this JUnit Mokito 2 AMOX talk. And if that works, yes. I'm Tomas, a backender from Beagle. Nice to meet you all. Nice to see some no faces here. Thank you for coming. And I, yes, I use my. I just start this presentation, ask you this question in the title of my presentation. JUnit 5, Mokito 2, and AMOX. Is it true for you? Who here in this room have worked with JUnit 5? Please raise your hands. Quite a lot of people. Who here have worked with JUnit 5 in Netcentric? Still a lot of people, nice to know. And who worked with JUnit 5, Mokito 2, and the last version of AMOX? OK, nice, 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 nice to see. So just to give you a given background about this presentation, when I did it, uh, three weeks ago, we just had three projects in Netcentric work with JUnit 5, Mokito 2, AM Mox. Two in Siemens, um, Lucas, you are somewhere there, I saw you, and also Michael, I saw you did a great job doing that, and in Netcentric website. Thing is, why you are not using JUnit 5? There is a lot of nice features on JUnit 5 I want to present to you today. I hope some of them are the features that I'm looking for it. I was really thinking that it could be cool. The first one that annoyed me a lot about JUnit 4 that sometimes I try to just, hey, I want, I have this big test, a lot, a lot of instantiations, starting stuff, and I want to test if there is a new pointer exception or legal parameter exception somewhere. What I could I do? Or do a try catch somewhere, which is not nice, or use the expected. On JUnit 5, they change it. They introduce this assert rows with a lambda, and you can say, in this exact part of the code, I want to verify for an exception. Also, you time out. If you want this part of the code to be running in less than uh, 500 milliseconds, you can do that. Very precise, in an exact place. Uh, who here worked with Spock? OK, I saw a little hand on the downside. Spock has a nice feature that you can just put uh, human names to your test. In JUN5, they did it. You can use display name. And in display name, what you can do is say a nice name that if you're using your IntelliJ on Dark's team, I hope, uh, you can see nice, nicely, hey, display name, class level, the name class. Also, there is another feature that just came out um, two, three months ago the display name generation. You can create your own class. This class can, it's kind of a filter, and it changes the name for you. So for example, here, I just create a dummy one, replace a camel case, and you have this nice name with the spaces between each camel letter. It's quite nice if you have to test it on IntelliJ and if you use them. Mm, who sometimes need to try components and verify each property with assert one, assert two, assert three, assert four, etc. And it fails in the first one, you fix it. There's a fail in the second one, you fix it, etc., etc., etc. Here, with assert all, we just say, hey, I want to test all the properties of my component. And with all the properties, I just have one failure. But with the three points, in my case, I just did a demo one, so <laughs> everything was not set. I think everybody here works AM mocks or, or Sling mocks or OCGI mocks are almost the same. They work at the same time. In JUnit 5, they create the extended width. The principle of the JUnit 5 is extension points over features. Sometimes JUnit 5 is not enough to provide you a better way to test. So what they did, they create extension points. So if someone, was, some, someone else can do better, just do it. Put Put extend what I do. For example, I am with AM context. The nice thing there, you can inject the AM context. If you don't need to have some boilerplate, you are not using the builder, just use the nice parameter there. You don't need to touch it. Conditional test. This one in JUnit 5, I just remember the ignore, but in JUnit 5, sorry, JUnit 4, they use the ignore. JUnit 5. We have this uh, disable. You're not ignoring the test. You're disabling it. It's a change. And also, you can enable it just on some OS. For example, if your Mac is not running well because you need to test a, a library of Linux, 
just run it on Linux. Or, for example, you can, if you're in Jenkins and when, hey, I don't want to run this test in Jenkins because it takes a lot of time. I don't want my build taking five minutes because of my test. So you can configure uh, system properties or environment properties. That helps you a lot if you have to have different sets of tests for each environment. Also, um, if someone joined Netcentric before last year, you remember about this slightly test we need to do with JavaScript and Java, etc. You can still do that using the disable if and enable if. You can add JavaScript code to enable or disable your test. I don't know if that's useful or not, but at least it's nice to see <laughs> that your test has some interest. Um, in, at least in BBVA, I remember we have a lot of modules. A module is a component, a component which has five, six, eight com other components inside. And if you want to test each component, I need to repeat the test or create a loop, etc. If you use repeated test, you don't need to do that. And you have also the display name to have a beautiful name, your IntelliJ or Eclipse. <coughs> and sometimes, oh, sometimes the parameterized test is not, oh, sorry, the repetition tests are not enough. We go with the parameterized. That's a feature that we had in JN4, but they change it. They then change it in JN5 and make it more clear. At least for me, it's easier to use this one than use the JN4 because JN4 is quite a complicated. At least for me, and you can use CSV, banana, apples, etc. Just try verify if it's a fruit and if the rank is not equals to zero. This feature, dynamic test, it was introduced in the last version 5.4. What you can do is basically you provide a source and you create a set of dynamic tests that will be running by this text factory. The text test factory will pick a an, an string of dynamic tests or a set, an array, etc., and just run all the tests gen dynamically generated. You just need to provide, for the dynamic test, you need to provide the key, which will be the test name, and your lambda function will be the body of your test. So it was a great feature that you can make like um, libraries of tests, you can reuse your code, just provide different feature, different set of um, set of bodies or set of content to be tested. I, I didn't put what to test a palindrome. If you want to test it, it's quite easy. I talk a lot about how to annotate it, to have this annotation, that annotation, and one of the things that I don't like about the unit, it's too verbose. You need to write a lot of things to write a small test. If you want to earn some some time, you can create your own annotation. Say, hey, I have this extend with extend with Mokito and AM contest, and you create your two your annotation with Mokito and AM contest, and you just use that. So it's clean. Your code is clean. It's still doing the same. Very very interesting. Very useful. That's not all the features. I just show uh, just showed sh show three uh, wait eight or ten features. There is more. One feature that uh, is still experimental is about parallel tests. Parallel tests, what you do is you say, hey, I want to run all these tests at the same time. JUnit will calculate how many CPUs do you have, how much they can parallelize it, and run it. I test it using a sequential one and parallelize it, and it took the same time. But it was a small set of tests. It's still experimental, but I think you should look on that, because in the future, it could be good, at least for testing IntelliJ or testing others. Or Maven, for example, if you have a large list of tests. Another thing that they did is no more need to make public everything. You don't need to say public class, public test, public setup, et cetera, et cetera. Default, it's OK, so it's less cool to see. Also, as I could see, Lambda support. You can add Lambda in your tests, so it's very useful to have short uh, short, less code to see and more visible, at least for who are working with Java 8, and also all the EDIs and tool support. Cool. And how they achieve that? They achieve that changing completely how you think about Gen 4. Gen 4 just a, was a monolith, just a big bar with everything inside. They changed it completely on Gen 5. They follow these three principles: extension points over features. As I said, if I cannot do better, I provide a point so someone can just 
be there and do better than I. Extensibility in mind, the same thing. It can be extensible if someone wants to provide another set of tests, do it, please do it. Help me to provide tests for you. And backward compatible, because I think there's a lot of j 4 things. And you cannot just say, hey, I'm not compatible, just migrate everything. So still compatible with j 4 so you can have two sets of code of tests on Gen 4 and Gen 5 in the same code run together. I read that in, uh, I don't remember if it was in the documentation or in an article, that they clearly separated JUnit the tool, the API, and JUnit the platform. So where you run your tests, how you code, how you code your tests are completely separated. How they did that? You have on the top level of this, your tests. Below it, you have the API. It means uh, how you code your tests, how the other notations you use, etc., are in the API. Below, you have the engine. The engine knows how to run the test. So, for example, I have the engine here for G4. I have an engine for G5, and I can create my own engine with my own API. You run it. Run it where on the platform. The platform knows how to run all the tests from all the engines. Clearly separated. So see to if tomorrow I want to create my own Angular tests, Angular API for running run for to run in JUnit 5, I can. I just need, need to create the API and the engine. On the other side, you have your tools and you have your platform. For example, sorry, you have the tool, have your tools and you have the platform who who knows how to launch, how to run the tests. To do that, to integrate these few things, they create the platform launcher. The platform launcher basically knows how to run, how to, con con how to talk with the plat platform engine. So if I need to say, hey, IntelliJ, I want to run, uh, if I'm IntelliJ, I want to run my test, I just pass through my plat the launcher and it's okay. So now, okay, cool. I want to migrate my Gen4 to Gen5. How I start it? First thing on the principal point, you add this boom. Boom means bill of material, so you have all your dependencies inside it. And for each of your dependencies, you need to add the API, as I said, the top level, the engine, the second level. If you are using parameterized tests, you need to add this one too, the JUnit params. And if you want to keep both of them, uh, Gen4 and Gen5, add the vintage engine. And AMOX, how the AMOX change it to be integrated in Gen5? Basically, we have two dependencies, Gen5 for Gen5 and Gen4 for Gen4. If you are, you are using Gen5, you use extended, if I just show, and you can use all the three ways of AM contest, the mock, 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 and the common one. But you still use the old way. The old way, like with a new, no rule anymore. You don't need the rule. You can just use new, new creation or the builder. I know a lot of people are using the builder, so extend can use it here. Mokito. What Mokito changed it? Mokito went further. Do nothing. Core, J Jupyter, works for Gen 5, works for Gen 4. Cool. So now I say, hey, okay, there is a lot of features. I know what I need to do. I want to migrate. Um, just raise a, if you want to migrate, think about your project, your project right now, I don't know, Siemens, BBVA, UBS. Uh, who thinks it's more than a week to migrate 300 tests, more or less? Who thinks it's more than a week? Uh, okay, I see five. Okay, five days, three days, three days, okay, 300 tests, two days, one day, less than one day, and the others I, I just don't care. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> basically, uh, I pick a project, uh, one if one of that I work on. And it took me six hours to migrate the project and create a wiki page to help you to migrate it. 
So more than 300 tests running OK. Some of them still with the vintage because they are, have Pormoc. Pormoc and JUnify are not talking because they have problems with the cross loader. And sometimes I need to have these Mokito sets settings that say, hey, if I have some kind of known expected stubbing, just ignore it for the moment. Um, if you, I think I don't have internet here. Yes, I don't have. But that's the wiki. It's quite useful. As I said, there is a disclaimer about about Pormoc. And if someone here are using IntelliJ, IntelliJ has a nice feature that you can just, with four clicks, migrate all the imports. And after that, you, you need to do some replaces. Uh, OK. So thank you so much.